Hello, my name is Jonathan and I'm a developmental biologist. I'm currently a fifth year PhD student in the Zhang Zhou lab at Baylor College of Medicine. In the Zhou lab, we study cellular recycling. This research topic is important because on average, an adult human body will recycle roughly 300 billion cells every day. Most of these are red or white blood cells, with a good portion also being the kind of skin cells that our bodies can't just shed. However, every kind of cell in our body gets recycled on a regular basis. There are a lot of diseases that can occur when cellular recycling isn't working properly. Uh, physical and neurodevelopmental disorders, as well as neurodegenerative disorders associated with aging, are just a few broad examples. We don't have therapeutic solutions for many of these diseases because there's still a lot that we don't understand about the fundamental process. Fortunately, there are many academic labs like the one I'm in working to help better understand this process so that we can hopefully come up with successful therapeutics in the future. In the Zhou lab, we use these little worms called C. elegans to track the recycling process during embryonic development. There are many reasons for using C. elegans, with one of the biggest reasons being that they are transparent. This makes it possible for us to track individual cells in the living embryos or worms as they develop. We often make worms that express fluorescent proteins to track interactions that we want to test. This means that I get to say I make blowing worms for a living. <laughs> um, so in terms of my daily routine, I'm not a morning person at all. So I usually start my day around 10 or 11 o'clock a.m., uh, sometimes as late as noon. <laughs> uh, the projects that I'm working on are consistently changing. So while some of the techniques that we use in the lab, like running a PCR to confirm a gene sequence or genotyping, are used in many experiments, uh, my day-to-day -day routine varies a lot. Probably the only thing that I take time to do every day is make sure that my worms are happy. Hey guys. So one of the things that I do every day is make sure that the worms I'm working with are well-fed and happy. And so the way that we do that, uh, if I can show you here, we have these little plates that we put bacteria on and that bacteria is what our worms eat. So as you can see, I've got some trays over there and then I have a bunch of trays here. All of these have different worm strands on them uh, the ones I'm working with the most I have stacks of, but I have lots of other plates uh, with different worm strains that I'm not actively working with. Um, but yeah, so I'll come in and I'll sit at this microscope, uh, which doesn't have a super high magnification, but it's enough to work with these worms because on this plate there's roughly a few hundred worms, so there's a lot of them that can fit on this and you have to use a microscope in order to see them or work with them effectively. Let's take a closer look. Despite not moving around too much, these guys look pretty happy. So I spend a lot of time taking care of my worms because without them I would not be able to do any imaging or really get anything done in our lab. So in order to image, I have to first prepare a microscope slide. Uh, and I had to speed this up for the sake of this video because it's it doesn't take too long, but it takes significantly longer than I could fit on this video. <laughs> Uh, and I have to have good embryos for that, so thus I have to take care of my worms. Um, but this is what the microscope slide preparation process looks like. And here's a good completed slide, and I'll take that over to the microscope room. All right, so once I've mounted my slide onto the microscope over here, and I've identified some embryos I want to image, I can turn around, pull them up on the screen, and this is what they look like. So I've picked out a few of them on here, and what I'll do now is, well, I've already set up the experimental parameters in this window, so I'll go ahead and start imaging and show you guys what that looks like. So it's cycling between different excitation frequencies which causes the fluorescent reporters that we've attached to the proteins we're interested in to, to glow, thus the glowing worms. After processing the raw imaging files, we can make time strip images or videos of the cellular interactions that we're interested in. In these videos, we track the breakdown of a dead cell inside a cell that has engulfed it, and we can see that when one of the key enzymes is missing from the engulfing cell, 
the dead cell fails to be broken down properly. I can use this relatively simple analysis to test whether other proteins or genes are necessary for the cellular recycling process. So that's the experimental side of my work and what it looks like. However, there's a lot of other things that we do as scientists, like attending meetings, engaging in mentorship, reading the latest scientific papers in our respective fields, sometimes in broader fields, staying up to date on compliance and training, and much, much more. We try to meet with the broader community of scientists in our field, as well as adjacent fields, at least once a year to network and to stay up to date on the latest methodology and scientific progress. In addition to big yearly conferences, our departments host local seminars every week that, uh, where we invite leading scientists from all over the world to share what they're working on and network. The invitees range from professors at small universities to Nobel laureates. All the departments on campus host their own seminar series every week, so there's always incredibly interesting talks to sit in on and learn new things from. These conferences and seminars are an incredibly important opportunity to consistently learn new things uh, from the leading minds in very, uh, varying scientific fields and are one of my favorite parts of being an academic scientist. Other than the fact that I get to sleep in as late as I want to anyways. Quick edit. I just wanted to let you all know that if you want to learn more about my work or keep up to date with some of the latest in aging, neurodegenerative, and developmental research, as well as other cool topics, I just created a new YouTube channel called Beyond the Worm for that purpose. So check me out there. Thanks. And to end, I want to encourage you to stay curious, stay humble, and never stop learning. Thank you.